And so once you see enough of a situation, you start to recognize trends. And so I saw that executive women, particularly in the Las Vegas area, were facing a lot of the same problems. And that really led me to create something called the Amazing Woman Program, which helped those women systemize and, and create discipline to make changes in their life. Welcome to Faces of Fleet, an interview series from WorkTruck, where we take a more personal look at the many interesting people in Fleet and some of the experiences that help shape them into who they are today. Before we get started, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss an episode. I'm Lauren Fletcher, executive editor of WorkTruck, and today I'm chatting with Misty Langford, founder of Bleat. Misty lives, breathes, and drives data analytics. She's the founder of Bleat, a technology looking to reimagine connected vehicles. Misty lives in Mississippi, where she juggles two teams, her husband's love of football, and her yellow lab, Louie. Today, we're going to sit down to chat about why she has the CV handle, the Bean Dip Kit, how hitchhiking landed her right where she needed to be, and the experience of creating an app. Welcome, Misty. Thank you so much. I'm super excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. So let's get started with some background. Um, you're the daughter of two generations of truck drivers. Can you share a little bit about what that was like growing up and maybe explain this bean dip kid CB handle? <laughs> yes, well, my grandparents, they drove, they were team drivers over the road, particularly from Texas to California. And that was my earliest experience with trucking. And a few times, because this was a long time ago, I actually got to go on trips with them. My grandmother tells a, a terrible story that I, I don't know that I believe about how one time I tried to open the door and put my foot out to touch the lines. But it was just really like a magical time as a young person. And even when I didn't get to go, my grandparents would send me postcards from wherever they were. But when I was on the truck, um, a must stop at almost every city was a convenience store so I could get Frito-Lays and Bean Dip. And I haven't had it in years, but to hear my grandmother tell it, like I lived on this stuff. So the CV handle, the Bean Dip Kid. And then my dad was a local truck driver um, delivering the newspaper in Houston. And he really taught me kind of later in life an appreciation for the way that trucks have to interact with other vehicles, particularly on city streets and in tight spaces. So it was a good start in life. That's really interesting. Um, you know, and I've also heard about your reformed hitchhiker ways. Uh, can you share a little bit about that experience? Oh, well, somewhat reformed. I would probably do it again in a heartbeat. But um, growing up in a very conservative home, one of the things my mom said on more than 10 occasions was that everyone in Las Vegas was going to hell. And so as an 18 year old, that seems like a totally legit reason to go there. And so through the help of some truck driving friends, I made it across there to Las Vegas. And I'll never forget as you come up from Arizona, Vegas, of course, is, in, is a valley. And so you come up over the crest and we were coming up at nighttime and the city was just, you know, lit up as Las Vegas is. And I was so completely overwhelmed. My first thought was like, what have I gotten myself into? To the point that I just said, I can't stop here. I have to keep going. So we went on up to Lake Tahoe. I regroup for a few days and then we approached Las Vegas again from the north during the daytime. I was much less overwhelmed. It was everything I thought a city should be. I lived there 17 years, found a husband, a couple kids, a career. So and and yeah, my mom was wrong. Not everyone <laughs> in Las Vegas is going to hell. So well that definitely landed you right where you needed to be. I love it. <laughs> So, you know, now since then, you've developed an app for Fleet. What inspired you to build an app? That's a great question. I mean, first of all, everybody's building an app for everything. So I wanted to get on board. This is actually my third time around uh, doing a tech solution. And for this particular technology, I really loathe the How My Driving sticker. It was a great concept decades ago, but now it's just like, it's hard to connect. Are you really going to get an 800 number and a vehicle ID while driving? And then are we just really saying, hey, people, we want you to call and say bad things about truck drivers. And that just wasn't my heart. So uh, it really led me to use my previous experience in technology to create an app that 
allow people to, yes, talk about how trucks are driving, but also to incentivize people to recognize the positive contributions that truckers make to our country every single day. I love it. And and what was the app building process like? Really difficult because when you're building an app, it's probably like if you're building a house or, or building any other kind of project, like you think of the one thing and then all of, a, uh, all of a sudden you're like, and it could do this and it could do that and it could do that. And meanwhile, your developers are looking at you like, no, 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 we need to focus. So that was the main thing was, you know, focusing on what would really create the solution that was most necessary for the problem. Were there any additional challenges that popped up that you didn't expect during the process? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, And that was, like I said, I've done this two other times before, created technology solutions. But I was really surprised at how, despite my heart for the trucking industry, how kind of personally inadequate I felt to really address this problem. I mean, being a woman in the trucking space, in the fleet space, um, I was surprised because I'm I'm a fairly confident person, I thought, but I really have had to do battle with some, like people call it the imposter syndrome. I've had to do battle with some of that and say, like, am I the right person to bring this to market at this time? So that was a surprise to me. And fortunately, there's a lot of support um, through this process. And so I, I feel great about doing this today. That's amazing. And, you know, on this amazing quote, what is this amazing woman program that I heard you started up? Yeah, well, like a lot of things in my life, I just kind of stumble upon things, problems that need solutions. And so uh, in my time in Las Vegas, as part of my career, I was a life coach. And like building an app, sometimes you think you want to be all things to all people, but that's not really how it usually ends up working the best. And so in that sense, I ended up specializing on executive women in various industries. And so once you see enough of a situation, you start to recognize trends. And so I saw that executive women, particularly in the Las Vegas area, were facing a lot of the same problems. And that really led me to create something called the Amazing Woman Program, which helped those women systemize and and create discipline to make changes in their life. So it it had some amazing, amazing results. I stay in touch with some of those ladies today. And it's one of the periods I'm most proud of in my life. I love it. I love the impact that you have helped to make in so many different industries. That's absolutely incredible. And, you know, bringing it back to Fleet, what is your favorite part of being involved in this industry? I love the fact that fleet and trucking is not really what people expect. Like people outside the industry tend to have um, a vision of what people inside the industry are like or what the companies are doing. And a great example for me is how Schneider Trucking views itself as a technology company that creates solutions. And so I just love the fact that in this industry, you can be a part of something that is so unexpected. Of course, I love the fact that it makes so many changes to people's lives on the daily. But I really love that point of being part of something that is just so different and unexpected. I love it. You know, Misty, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me and to share a little bit about your past and experiences in app building. For anyone interested in learning more about mobile apps for Fleet, Fleet, or to watch more episodes of Faces of Fleet or Truck Chat, check out the links below. As always, thanks for tuning in. Hit that like button and comment below to let me know who I should be chatting with next. And be on the lookout for more episodes of Truck Chat coming soon, where I'll continue to focus on the people and the issues that matter most to work truck fleets. Thank you.